Hi, this is Deborah Peters. Welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. And I'm really excited to be with you today. It is the winter solstice, Friday, the end of the week, and the shortest day of the year, the darkest day of the year, and just before a really magnificent full moon. Hi, Pauline, great to have you. I've been meaning to catch up with you and have a conversation, so I'm glad to see you today. The winter solstice, yeah, it's just like such a pivotal time in the year. I was kind of reminiscing recently, um, hey, Don, nice to see you, Massimo, about uh, 2012. I had a winter solstice party and um, you know, I took a lot of teasing around that. But um, if you remember 12, 12, 12 uh, was a big time. And then we had the winter solstice. There was supposed to be some kind of big kaboom on consciousness. Um, I don't know if it was really that obvious, but it was certainly a pivotal time in my life. And I was reminiscing today about that time Hi, Curtis. How are things in Saskatchewan? Um, and Nader, nice to see you. Murray. Hey, Don. Hi, Carrie. How's it going? You got lots of snow out there? I'll tell you what, I totally miss the snow and I've been feeling really nostalgic. Another thing I've been reminiscing about is last year at this time, I was literally just getting home from Switzerland. And um, I had gone to this incredible uh, Winterfest in Gestat. And um, then at the end of the Winterfest, everybody went home and I stayed on for a couple days and I, I went skiing. Because during the time I was there from Thursday till Sunday, we had a dump of about three feet of fresh powder. And normally they, uh, hey Robert, hi Chris, nice to see you. Um, normally, you know, uh, Switzerland doesn't get as that much snow at that early part of December. But last year it was like, I asked for it basically flying in. I'm like, all right, universe, if there's anything you can give me, it would be a phenomenal ski trip in the Swiss Alps at the conclusion of this party. And so it was my very first time skiing the Swiss Alps. And actually it was my, I hadn't been on skis for a few years. So I uh, just getting out there was like the beginning of something for me. So just to kind of digress back to when I had this winter solstice party at my home in 2012, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? When we are creating things in our lives and we're, we're having experiences that we think there's something, you know, we think in the moment, like this is an experience I'm having like this is a party I'm having, these are people I'm inviting over to my home, but we never, I don't think we can ever really know what that experience really is until after the fact. You know, I guess that's why the saying goes, hindsight is 20, 20. Um, Hey Travis, good to see you buddy. Um, so yeah, and Tim, nice to see you. I'm, isn't it cool to have social media? Because some of these people are my old buddies from back when I was in school, and we're actually able to be on here together and just, you know, have a little hangout. This winter solstice party that I had um, really set the tone for some major changes in my life. And I didn't really, you know, I thought I understood it at the time, but, but I really have come to learn this in my wisdom, <laughs> is that, you know, we can know something intellectually, but then to like really embrace it and have it connect to us on a deep sort of soul, cellular, you know, spirit, mind kind of thing is another experience of life. So here we are, we're six years later and uh, going on to seven years later and What's happened this past uh, month and a half for me, maybe two months, ever since early November, I've been going through a, um, the, the finishing up of a reboot in my life that began in May. Now, I want to share with you something about belief systems. Hi, Annie. Nice to see you. Um, 
The interesting thing about belief systems is, you know, they're like points of view. We really have to be careful what our belief systems are, what our points of view are, because they actually manifest in our lives as experiences. So whatever you've got going on in your life right now is basically a product of your points of view. Hey, Ma, is it Ma or Mao? I'm curious about that. So happy holidays to you too. Hi, Justin. Wow, so many people on here. Marcus Trevor Bovee the second. So cool to see you. Smile more. You're handsome. I want to see your pearly white, especially with that new haircut you have. Um, so these points of view that we have, I'm always looking at my points of view and asking myself, you know, is this point of view really serving me or is it causing some kind of havoc in my life? Is it causing some kind of stop or choke point? And, and I believe that this is what's come out. Oh, it's Mau. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. I think that's what's come out of that whole winter solstice party that I did back in 2012. Because for me, it was like the beginning of a change process that I had... Um, consciously put myself on and I said you know what I want to I want to be different I want I want to be more me because I had I had pretty much my whole lifetime yes we do write our own fate Justin you're absolutely right um I think most of my lifetime I was really just kind of scratching the surface on being me and um there was a time I I was completely connected to me and then and then I just started moving around the planet a lot and throwing myself into these new situations and new communities and new cultures that you know the recalibration process was always sort of keeping me just a little bit off but little did I know that it was actually bringing me back into alignment. And that's what I want to share with you today because our points of view and, um, and our belief systems are really what create our experiences. It's what attracts the relationships that we have. It's what impacts our financial world. It's what, um, determines our joy and our happiness. And, you know, if you really want to break it right down into kind of like a granular terminology, it literally impacts the cells of our bodies and that determines our health. So points of view and belief systems are really just you know, a repetition of what we've been thinking and what we've been focused on that eventually becomes a pattern. And then we decide it's our beliefs. So here we are. It's the winter solstice. This is the darkest day of the year. This is the shortest day of the year. And it's like the final, final day of things getting smaller, things getting shorter, things getting darker. And I think this is a blessing because as I was saying earlier, from early November on, I was completing a reboot that actually started back in May. Now, I happen to have this belief system that the 90 days leading up to your birthday are going to be the 90 days where you really get a good look at yourself and everything that does not serve you comes to the surface, presents itself, and you get to choose whether you're going to keep it or whether you're going to let it go. And then when your birthday rolls up, I believe that that's really the beginning of your individual new year. And I've maintained this pretty much all of my life, even before I discovered astrology and even before I discovered numerology and even before I discovered, you know, the quantum field and, and universal laws and just all of these other um, sort of ways of looking at how we're creating our own reality. So starting in May, pretty much everything in my life just started to 
kind of fall apart and crumble. And I was really quite excited about it because there was things that I was focusing on, especially in my business model that weren't fulfilling for me anymore. So on some subconscious level or, you know, sort of like back in the back of my mind, I had asked for these things to shift anyway. So now here they are, they're shifting, they're falling apart. And I was like, I was just like done. So by the time my birthday rolled around at the end of July, I was thinking to myself, all right, so I've cleaned house. I've released all of these points of view about life and about myself that no longer serve me. I remapped my entire business model and I created a brand new strategy for the next year of my life. Well, interestingly enough, this is that last week before the six month mark. My birthday's the end of July, so here we are rolling up to December. I'm at, this, I'm at the halfway mark, and that's how I sort of look at it. And at this halfway mark, I have to say that I am probably happier, healthier, more fulfilled, and more enthusiastic about the future than I think I have ever been in my entire life. And I've been pretty excited about the future many, many times. When I moved to Vancouver, I was super excited about the future. When I moved to LA, I was super excited about the future. Um, hey, Patrick, nice to see you. Um, so, you know, I've been really excited about my future lots of times in my life, but this is different. This is, um, this is more grounded. This is more centered in a knowingness. And you know, if you look at the hierarchy of consciousness, of awareness, you know, there's the four stages of consciousness, right? There's where you don't know, you don't know. And you know, it's like ignorance is bliss, baby. Because <laughs> when you don't know, you don't know, you just think that everything out there is, you know, happening to you and that you know you're a victim and that you know you don't have any control over your life and then there's the second stage of consciousness where you know you don't know and this is what i call kind of like the waking up phase so you're like wow there's things that i really don't know and i would really like to grow i'd really like to get more information at this point i think it's a more logical, linear sort of approach to the learning curve. Then when you get to level three or stage three consciousness, you know that you know, right? Because you've gone through some personal growth, you've done a level up with yourself, you've expanded your awareness, and now you're in a place where you know that you know. So be careful how long you hang out in this space of knowing what you know. Because if you're not careful, you can get stuck there and the ego can convince you how much you know. One of the things, uh, one of the awarenesses that I've, I've come to over the last couple of years is the more I know, the more I don't know. Because there's just so much to this expansion of who we are. And next week when I do the show on Tuesday, which is Christmas day, and then I'm gonna do a second show again on Friday. I'm doing these twice a week, you guys. Tuesdays at four, Fridays at four. And so, you know, set your alarm because you're gonna to wanna to tune into these. I'm gonna start rolling out a bunch of tools for you to use as you go into next year. So we're gonna to start to look at how you can begin to up-level your game. And the buzzwords that you wanna be considering are allowing, awareness, right? And you also wanna be considering points of view and beliefs because these create conclusions. Every time you have a point of view on something, you've come to a conclusion. 
I remember studying with um, Stuart Wilde back in the 90s. And I was kind of like a groupie. I followed him around and went to all of his seminars, read all of his books, and listened to all his audio programs. He was the funniest personal development guy, I think, that I've ever had the opportunity of, of um, learning from and learning with. And, you know, he used to always say things like, just practice not having a point of view for like 15 minutes and see how that works for you. And so then the exercise was to keep anteing up the time frame. So practice not having a point of view for an hour, practice not having a point of view for a day. And once I had actually worked myself up to being able to not have a point of view for a whole week. And it drove me crazy because you see these points of view get stuck in us and um, our neurology actually starts to build up patterns of thought around those points of view. And the deeper and the, and the more committed we are to our points of view, then the less space, which is another word I want you to start to um, focus on with me, then the less space there is for the, the, the realm of possibilities to reach you, right? And then you have to do everything with your logical linear mind, and which means you basically have to grind it out. I don't know anyone that's successfully been able to grind things out and be happy. I know lots of people that grind things out. Hi, Mark Elliott and Patrick Tracy. Nice to see you. Um, I know lots of people that grind things out all the time, but they're not happy. And I know a lot of people that grind things out successfully and they're just living life on a, a superficial kind of level. So Practicing these non points of view for a week for me was excruciating because <laughs> if, if you know me at all, you know that I have a lot of opinions. And so I can be very vocal about my opinions. And here I am practicing a whole week of no point of view. So something that I've learned from uh, a toolbox called access consciousness is to ask this question of myself whenever I find myself getting into my points of view, especially if I'm on my soapbox with my points of view. And that is to ask myself, wow, interesting point of view. I have this point of view. And to just say it over and over and over to myself every time I think that I'm right. Now, you know, being right is subjective. And um, again, when you look at the hierarchy of consciousness and the hierarchy of emotions, there's a vast difference between a belief and a knowingness. So it's like belief is here and knowing is here. When you believe something, it's because you've, you've practiced it and it's become a neurological pathway. It's become an algorithm, essentially, just like the algorithms. You, I'm sure you've all experienced retargeting uh, with adverts. So you go on a website, you search something, like I, I was looking for a pair of shoes and um, I was looking for them at, on a, a department store on their online program platform. And now every time I, open my search engine, these shoes pop up, right? It's just retargeting. Your mind works the same way. Like, where do you think they came up with this stuff from? Where do you think the whole way a computer functions with software programs and hardware and all that, where do you think that came from? It was modeled after the human unconscious mind process. So essentially, belief systems are algorithms and it's just a thought that you think over and over and over, right? It's why when you sign up for a particular corporate culture, you know, or, or religion, it's, you know, it's like you've signed up for a particular belief system and then you need to keep studying it in order to keep um, invested. So what if you were to just say to yourself, I would like to create more space 
in my thinking so that I can allow in the possibilities that I have not been allowing in so that I can create a more expanded living of myself. And it's just, you know, it's really just as simple as being willing to ask those kinds of questions of yourself. And then when you have a point of view on something, especially if it's a point of view that you defend, you know, it basically the more you defend something, the more stuck, right? So here's what happens. So we have these points of view and they create a construct in our brain syndicate. And our brain syndicate then builds neural pathways that represent that construct. And it's the job of the hippocampus, which is part of the brain syndicate, it's in our brain. It's a part of the hippocampus to actually repopulate these patterns, these algorithms of thought. And we can actually convince ourselves that what we're believing is like the gospel. It's like, it's like the truth. It's like the truth instead of a truth in the moment that we have come to accept because we've rerun the pattern so many times that we've limited ourselves and we cannot see beyond the scope of that thought pattern or those belief systems. So here's the question you need to just ask yourself. Is this really fulfilling? Because if it is, then keep going, you know? But if it's not fulfilling, or maybe you don't even have um, a comprehension or a scope on that it could be better, you know, how, what else is possible? How does it get better than this? So just asking the questions and it already opens up more space. And when I, when I say space, so our unconscious mind has a set of prime directives. And one of the prime directives is we are hardwired. It's like the C drive on our computer. We are hardwired to constantly seek more and more and more. So asking for more is really the key to creating more within yourself and to having more fulfillment and to having more joy and to having more creativity and experiencing a broader spectrum of life, what life could possibly offer you. Um, so it looks like this. Let's say, um, let's say my hand represents points of view and this hand represents points of view. The more points, the more committed we are to our points of view, the more obstinate we are about our points of view, the, the tighter the points of view connect together. And, you know, like with my hand, you can't get anything in between here, right? So when you start asking questions like what else is possible, how does it get better than this? Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. What ends up happening is it actually opens up more space between those points of view for the possibilities that you haven't even thought of yet to come to you as just a spark maybe in the beginning. Maybe it's just a wisp. Hi Chuck, how are you? And Lincoln Escrow, Lorena, nice to see you. And Gianni, I'm sorry I didn't say hi to you guys earlier. I've been kind of in my zone. So um, the thing of it is, is that we have these belief systems that dictate what we should look like, where we should live, what that means, who we should hang out with, um, what kinds of experiences we have, and then we have all these social constructs that take advantage of that and then they they package it up in such a way to sell us their products and services so um if you're a certain gender you know there's marketing of certain products that get 
that get targeted to you. If you're a certain age range, then there's certain products and services that get targeted towards you. And these kinds of things then just keep building and building and building and building. And pretty soon we start to believe it. And then we start to put ourselves into those boxes of limitation, right? And I'll give you a case in point. So I was out walking uh, my dog a few years ago with a neighbor and um, she, we were both single at the time and she was saying how all the good men are gone or all the good men are married. And, and, and I was thinking to myself like, wow, no wonder you're having these experiences because you've, she was, she had, she was so adamant that there was no space. Like even if a guy would have rolled up in his car that was totally the perfect guy for her and jumped out and planted a kiss on her and said, Hey baby, come home with, I want to marry you. She just would have still been committed to her point of view. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just something that she had said so much to herself that she just was not willing or capable at that point in even seeing any other possibility. Right. I had another, I had another neighbor that I did some uh, dog walking with and she was saying how she had to get glasses and you know we're we're relatively the same age and and i said wow you know like what's up and she goes well you know once you hit a certain age your eyesight goes and you have to get glasses and i'm like really i, I didn't know that like i didn't get that memo and i said wow well my eyesight's like 2020 or something, you know, or better. And she's like, that's not possible. I'm like, sure it is. Everything and anything is possible. So, you know, this is what I want to leave you with. Um, Cause I could really go on and on for a long time. How long have we been on here? 26 minutes. And it's getting dark as you can see, cause it's the shortest day of the year. So it's getting dark early, but you know, this is where I want, if you have any questions, you know, just type them in and um, I'd be happy to answer them. Here's what I want to have you just really take away from this is that today is the shortest day of the year. And this would be a really good day that as the sun goes down, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, hey Rob, um, that you let your limiting points of view go down with this short day. Because tomorrow's a full moon and it's going back to the light tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, the days are getting longer. So this is the darkest, deepest, darkest day of the year. This is like the end, baby. It's like right here, right now. It's not December 31st, it's today. So what would you like to just have come to an end today? with this darkness. What darkness in your life would you like to just let go of? You know, is it, is it fear? Is it doubt? Is it poverty? Is it poor health? Is it um, lack of self-love? Is it some kind of unfulfillment? You know, I go back to uh, thinking about Stuart Wilde again. I mean, his last name was really befitting. He was a huge influence on me, okay? And, um, and he was probably the wildest um, personal development guy that I've ever uh, followed around and studied with. And, you know, he, he said one time, and it was probably in one of his books too, you know, have you experienced everything you want to experience in your life? Have you traveled to enough places? Have you met enough interesting people? Have you learned enough vocabulary? Have you taken on a new art? You know, have you, have you met enough lovers? Like, have you, created enough businesses like have you really let yourself be everything and anything that you can be 
Because I, I can assure you that you haven't. I know I haven't, and this is what I do for a living. I coach people into that space. And I'm just really claiming it now. And I've been doing this all my life. And even when I thought I was really going for it, I know now that I wasn't going for it as much as I could have been going for it. And that changes every single day where I'm willing to just put myself out there in even a bigger, grander way. And I'm not talking about, you know, throwing out the baby with the bathwater and taking ridiculous risks that could ruin you. But I am talking about building beyond this reality. So it's the end of, uh, it's the end of winter or the beginning of winter. It's the end of the shortening of the days and it's, it's new beginnings right now. Um, you know, I always felt that the end of the year wasn't that big of a deal, that it was always my, my birthday was the beginning of my year. And this is a different year and I can't explain it to you. I don't have any sort of science on it. If you're one of those people that has to see things in a linear logical way, I'm just telling you energetically how I'm feeling about this year coming up. I feel like today is like massive closure. I've been living in 2019 since the beginning of November. Like as far as I was concerned, 2019 started then. And so here I am and I'm moving into 2019 in a way that I've never gone for it before. And I really want to encourage you guys in, in whatever way, take a risk, get out there, create something new for yourself. Don't wait. Don't wait for next year or till your kids are grown or whatever your excuse is, you know, shed those points of view right now. Let those beliefs go that you've been holding on to that have been limiting you, that have been holding you hostage, that have been keeping you unhappy. If you can look at any area of your life and see unhappiness and unfulfillment, then you're just really messing with yourself because you are the creator of your reality. Every little thing that you have going on is all about you, baby. It's all about you is nobody doing it to you and there's nobody coming to save you and this is the great awakening right now you are your savior okay because you put yourself right where you are and you can put yourself wherever you put your attention and here's the last thing i'm going to leave you with because this is how i know this to be so true there was a time when I was really fascinated with um, professional car racing. And I was in London on a business trip. I have a, a gym that I like to work at, work out at in Mayfair, or in this, there's another one in Chelsea, it's a chain. And I was in the gym and it was early in the morning, like 5.30. I never read the newspapers and I never watch the news. So some of you may think that that's being an ostrich, but it's how I create my own reality. I don't need to buy into any of that. Besides, by the time the news is reported, it's already old. Anyway, that's another conversation. So I was reading this newspaper and there was this article about this professional race car driver from Scotland and the journalist was interviewing him and I bit my tongue and, um, asking him, you know, how are you doing all these wins? Like, this is incredible. So long story short, um, I came back to LA, a friend called me like three or four days later, cause I was fascinated by the article and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I focused on the energy of it so much. I literally had a friend call me a week later and say, Deborah, you've got to get over here 
and have dinner with us right now. Drop whatever you're doing. It was eight o'clock at night on a Thursday. He goes, drop whatever you're doing. I'm sitting here with a guy that owns a professional race car driving team and they want to work with you. So I, I did like, hey, ask and you shall receive, right? Why would I say no? So I got my car, drove across town, had dinner with these guys and long journey together. And I find myself at a race car driving school studying the techniques that race car drivers are taught because I wanted to understand more about how, hey Rhonda, how their mindset is created. And here's what happens. So when, when they're on the track, they are taught to only focus on where they want to put the car. And it doesn't matter if there's room for the car or not. They are taught to focus with all of their senses on where they want to put that car. Not to focus on the guardrail, not to focus on the tires on the inside of the track, but to focus on where they want to put that car. And it works every single time. And so that's my metaphor for you. If you're going through life trying to avoid the pitfalls, if you're going through life trying to avoid what could go wrong, then you're going to get exactly that. And so with this end of this season and this winter solstice, make a commitment to yourself right now that you're only going to focus on what you want to create. And that creation is who you are being. And that's it. That's all I have for you. So thank you for being a part of this. I absolutely feel so blessed to do this. My new book is coming out in the new year and there's just a whole lot of really cool stuff that we have going on. So please keep tuning in, set your alarm for four o'clock on Tuesdays and Fridays and let your tribe know, share this, get this out to everybody. Let's make a big dent in all the bullshit that goes on in this world that keeps you from being, doing, and having what you wanna be, do, and have. And let's just light up the world. How does it get better than this? Love you guys, bye. Happy, happy, have a great weekend. Get that Christmas shopping done. Talk to you soon, bye. <laughs>